Woo! You got it. I know. I know. Hitting the lap. Be uh, careful, Mallory. You're tall. Watch out for the boom up there. Uh, hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Carmelo Anthony. He's one of the greatest scorers in NBA history, a 10-time All-Star and three-time Olympic gold medalist. Vin, the seventh estate, is his global wine brand, and he has a brand new weekly talk show set to launch on December 7th called 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, co-hosted by longtime friend of the brand, The Kid Marrow. We're excited for that. Carmelo Anthony, welcome to the show. Yes, yes, yes. How are you around spicy food before we get started? I'm all right. <laughs> we, go, <laughs> we go figure it out as we go. I'm good. I'm usually good with spicy food. I, I eat a lot of spicy food. and. You know, I like to dip and dab and see what's really hot, so... Today, I guess we'll find out what's really hot. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Okay. Not eat the whole wing. You know, I go wherever you go in this whole thing, but usually just we're gonna sip slow. Yeah, let's start slow, and okay. then if we're feeling confident, we can build from there. All right. I like that. That was a little light. Yeah, there we go. A little light. So when I heard that you were launching a show at the Kid Merrill, my first and immediate thought was that makes total sense. Do you remember the first time that you were introduced to him or his work? And then why did you think you'd gel well together on a show? It was the it was the culture. It was how he did it. It was how they did it. Um, you know, he was over at Vice. I was in the, you know, been, I was around at Vice at that time and just seeing them how they was operating and seeing how they was moving and kind of just setting the precedent for a lot of shows and, and content that, that that we see today. Mero is an illustrious Hot Ones alum. We actually reached out with him to see if he could help us in preparing this interview, and he went okay. above and beyond, actually sending a video question for you here on Wing One. So if you look at the monitor, here's the kid Mero with a very important question for Carmelo Anthony. Yo, Melo, what's up? It's your boy, the kid Mero, the human do-rag flap. I'm here <laughs> trying to get like you, bro. I'm trying to fill up this wine cellar with some fine vino. But check it out. I got a question for you, B. What is... Mm. The official leather of dudes like us. Oh. <laughs> you know the answer. I'm a Pele guy. It was just the swag. It was the leather. It was the aura that you, you know, that you exuded when you had a Pele on. That's actually a really good wing. So you can go back and go for a bite, another bite? I'm going in. Just because I'm kind of enjoying it, you know? Mm-hmm. From the wreck to Mount Royal to Court 77, which basketball court of your youth was the most significant in shaping you as a player, you think? I would say the 77 court. Once you got in that cage, it wasn't, you had to get yourself out of that. And it wasn't no ages. You know, you, you was eight, 10, 12, playing with the older people, older guys that was out there. So you had to be different. You had to be, you had to be very different uh, to survive that basketball court. What would you say distinguishes somebody who grew up playing in Baltimore versus someone who grew up playing in New York or DC? Well, it's just, it's a mindset. I think everywhere is a mindset, but you know, as, as far as Baltimore is, you know, we always felt it was overshadowed. You know, you, you in between DC, New York, Philly, and you know, it's kind of just skip over Baltimore. So we always had that, that edginess, that- The chip. Know, that chip that we, our backs against the wall at every moment. And then during your senior year at Oak Hill, I'm curious, which was a sweeter win for you? Was it beating LeBron St. Vincent St. Mary's team on national television, or was it coming back to Baltimore to beat your old school Towson Catholic? Oh, these are good questions, man. Um, I would say coming back. Coming back, because that was like the ending. It didn't end well when I was in Baltimore. Being able to come back and play against my, form, you know, my, my former team, like game evolving, you know, at that moment, it was like, I really want to come back to play my old school, but also to bring it back to Baltimore City as a whole. 
Nah, we do three for three so far. There we go. <laughs> When Jimmy Butler was on the show, he told this story about how you guys are on a night out in Italy and that you stole a bottle of 2004 Petrus from the table before anyone else got a chance to try mm. it. Confirm or deny? Did he use the word stole? That's what he said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We could check the tape. Dude, okay. But he was like excited to try it. And then all of a sudden, did the he tell you, Petrus. Did he tell you why I stole No, well, I'm, just, I, I, I'm, I'm open to the clarification So I'm going right to give now. you what yeah, happened yeah, and then yeah. you tell me if I stole it or not. Okay, all right, all right. All right. They're at dinner. They're already at a wine dinner, mm -hmm. right? I come a little late, so I feel bad. I'm late. I know the restaurant, so I say, I'm gonna go downstairs to the cellar. I'm gonna grab some bottles and I'm gonna, here's what we're gonna do tonight. I go grab the bottles and I grab the bottle of Petrus and I bring it to the table. They were drinking everything else and left the Petrus there at the end of the night, closed. So we was leaving, I grabbed the Petrus. No one knew I had the Petrus. Right. They thought we'd already drank the Petrus. It was just so much wine going on. So you don't think that they could have possibly been like saving the Petrus, you know, 2004 bottle of Petrus, that's a very special wine. You don't yeah, think that I, maybe I, I they told were them, saving it. I told them in the car, on the picture, I sent them the picture with me on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was, you know, they wasn't ready for the Petrus at that moment. Right, right. So, you so had to, yeah. I had to preserve that. I see hot ones and stamped a couple of these. Okay. I see the road we about to go down after this one. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that one down. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Got the intended effect. I see what we're about to do here. <laughs> I have this memory of you in the 2008 Olympics in Beijing holding this full-on Sony camcorder. Yeah. Two questions, why? And then two, do you still have the footage? I still have the footage, yes. Um, I just, I understood moments. You know, I just understood like this is, this is a moment. The greatest athletes in every sport is in one place. For me, I was trying to see everything. Of the three gold medals that you have, which one has the most significance to you? I would say 2008, because prior to 2008, we lost in the Olympics in 04, mm -hmm. and we lost in 06 in the World Championship, and 08 was kind of that, that redeem moment. Get right. You gotta get right. I see the smirk. This one's a jump right here. <laughs> it's a leap. Mm-hmm. It's a leap. You got more questions? <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Is it true that you're once in conversations with Spider-Man creator Stan Lee about creating a DVD comic where you play basketball by day and fight crime at night? You did some research, man. Because <laughs> now people, people don't know that. So, yes, you know, and then... You know, big shout out to, you know, Recipes of Stand. We had this conversation years ago, probably 03, 04. I went to his office and he's like, I want to make you a character. He said, I want to create this character for you. I don't know what it is, but I'm going I'm to let you know what it is. And he actually started doing, he created an actual comic book. But I can't find the shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it's at. But the fact that Stan, he reached out to me at that point in time. So... Yeah, we was in the works on, you know, working on, I don't I wouldn't say it was a marvel, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but that's but, amazing. Yeah, so, you know, the fact that we had that conversation, and, and that's that's more priceless than to me than anything else. And then, is it true that The Wire was shot in and based on your neighborhood, and that you'd casually walk by that iconic orange couch, just like in your everyday life? Yeah, that was just, you know, you walk to school, you see that, they filming, you know, it was just everyday life, casual. Oh, I would, you know, you wonder what the cameras is over there, what they shooting, why they shooting. You know, you hear the, the back and forth of get out of here from the, from the people that's <laughs> actually living there to the, the actors and the set. And you know, it was just a lot. But I mean, it wasn't about that neighborhood that was just shot in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But the story consisted of guys and people that was connected to those neighborhoods. And then finally, is it true that Master P tried out for the Denver Nuggets during your rookie year? And if so, what, if anything, do you remember about that? That's a fact. 
Master P, yes, Master P tried out for the Denver Nuggets. We actually had a little cool relationship, man, during preseason training camp. Um, you know, he used to pull up in his limo to the practices and, you know, he was Master P, right? So that, you know, he was the, one of the originals of kind of making that transition over and from hip hop to, to sports and basketball in particular. So yeah, he, we, we, he was out there in practice. Um, I had Dennis Rodman there. Sean Kemp was there. Like I had That's all That's an those. insane rookie year. Yeah, so it was like everybody was just, training cramp was crazy that first year. I see the names are starting to get, you know, they going from one to two to three. I appreciate you bringing wine, by the way. Yeah, y'all was offering me milk. I might have had a wine and milk. <laughs> <laughs> So I've heard you talking about your time in Denver as not only building a new team, but also changing a culture. Why was switching the jersey from navy to baby blue, why was that such a symbolic moment in your eyes? I just think the intersection of culture and sports and hip hop and just the fan base at that, at that point in time. And also the NBA was like, you know, it was just looking for new energy and new identities and you know when we came in it was just like here's a perfect time to do that one of my favorite throwback jerseys alex english number two right denver nuggets that's one of my favorites i actually wore it it you just felt it you felt like the like the newness mm. of, of, of denver you felt the organization was trying to go into another direction did you live in the same complex as the mascot rocky I did, I did. That was my man. That's, <laughs> Rocky, Rocky was my man. I lived in the same, we lived in the same high rises, um, you know, as, as each other. And I never knew that was him. You know, he used to do the, the backward shot. Yeah, yeah. He was known for that. One day I'm after practice, I think I was injured, and I come back for treatment later on, and I catch him. I catch him with the, <laughs> I catch him with the helmet on. And I'm like, oh. I've seen you in the elevator I before. Said, oh, you live in my building. He's like, yeah, I live in your, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to break the news to you. So yeah, I lived in the building with Rocky. Shout out to Rocky. Shout out to Rocky. This might be the setup wing right here. It's actually the next one, but this one's not funny either. That ain't bad. It's, um, <laughs> got a little. Yeah, and kind of like a time release thing, you know? Yeah, it got that, uh, like that Caribbean, mm -hmm. like, stain to it. Yeah, that, like, a uh, scotch like bonnet a Jamaica, kind of, yeah. yeah, light you up. Like, it's alive a little bit. Yeah. Ginger. It's a party, yeah. Do you have a layperson-friendly explanation for what made you such a great rebounder? You know, your commitment to getting boards. I think that's one thing that your critics, they don't give you enough credit for. Well, I appreciate that. I always wanted to make the game fun, right? So I always was told at, at your position, which is a small forward, 6'8", you have to be one of the best rebounders at that position. So I always enjoy like rebounding, like it was just fun. I always enjoyed it. And then I used to, I used to watch, you know, guys like Moses Malone and how he used to, you know, throw the ball back to himself to pad his stats. Like, so I used to, I used to, <laughs> <laughs> so I learned all of that, like how to get fouled, you know, to get my rebound back. So I, I learned little pieces of the game. Um, it really kicked in on the USA team. We got 10, 12 Hall of Famers on one team. I can't do what I do in New York and in Denver. I'm gonna go make this game fun. I wanna I wanna break Charles Barkley rebounding record. And that's that's where the rebounding kind of just got it, that tenacity and you know, fuck out of here. It's like <laughs> <laughs> So all of those started to come into play. So yes, rebounding has always been like fun for me. Beyond insanity. You're not supposed to eat that. You, mm, you can smell it. Yeah, it'll be immediate. Yeah. <laughs> mm. oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, nothing fun about that. <sighs> oh, shit. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. And it kind of doesn't stop, you know? It just keeps growing. Mm. 
<clears throat> Pause. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, Mel, incredible <laughs> composure from your side of the table over here. That's amazing. I think you're doing better at this than I am. Yeah. No problem. Woo! <laughs> Mm. And then be careful, be careful. Yeah, I know, I got you. Too. All right, all right. I'm just checking on you, just checking. <clears throat> ah! Do you have a favorite mellow lyric of all time? You have the unique distinction of being name checked by <laughs> Pop Smoke <coughs> by Lil Wayne and Beyonce. Ah. Ah. <sighs> this thing got me crying. I know, baby. I know, me too. I ain't shed a tear in so long. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ooh. Fabulous had a great, a great one. He said something like coming through the thunder must have been Hoodie Mellow, you know, on a Freddie and Jason release that him and Jada Kiss did. So that was actually another one, you know, a long time. Damn, kid. <laughs> I'm crying because of the, the hot sauce, not because of the song yeah, sentimental. Right, to me. no, but it could be just, yeah, be sentimental. But it is sentimental to me. Mm -hmm. but. Nah, that was a that was another one like that 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 I don't think gets enough a of lot of credit notoriety to that. All right, how are you doing? I'm good. I, I got my second win, but you, I see you tearing up over there. <laughs> We're both crying here. I know, man. This is a That's very, this this show is a very sentimental. You know, I know, you know. It's a, it's a, the wings that can hit you right in the heart. Sometimes, yeah, I knew that. You know? I knew something was crazy with that one, though. <laughs> are you ready to move on to the next one? You want to ask another question first, or you want to go to the next one? <laughs> Here's what the good. Are you is. competing with me? Cause I see, I haven't I'm, seen you, you know take what? a sip I'm not yet. competing. I'm, if anything, I'm just a, a support system. Like we're on the same team. We're in the okay, same. We're in the same backcourt over here. I'm all right, trying Carmelo? not to hit. You know, go over there. I saw that you haven't touched. Uh, you haven't touched any beverage so far. Yeah, it's all good. Respect. Respect. All right. So this next one is the Zuzu Seven Pot. It will not be as bad as the last one. Nah, but I'm waiting on you. You all go right. first. All right. <laughs> Taking it down, living to tell the tale over here. Right. I see how you. I see the setup, though. Don't. <laughs> I see the setup. Not bad. But right, I wasn't lying. I wasn't lying to you. No, not bad. So the Big East has always been larger than life, but especially during your era. Where does going undefeated in the Carrier Dome rank on your list of career accomplishments? Top. 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 It's, it's, it's hard to do. And, and I'm glad you asked that question because it, it doesn't get enough attention to that either. To go into a place like Syracuse, go 17 and 0 in the Carrier Dome and never lost. I mean, the championship was, was great, but that's, that's, that's special to know that you did that. You know, you took care home. Do you remember what Coach Bayheim's reaction was initially when after you won the national championship, you were talking about staying at Syracuse so that you could keep, you know, having fun and being he the big man was, on he campus? He thought I was bugging. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he said? You bugger. No, he didn't say that. He told me that, <laughs> you know, said it in other ways in Bayheim language. But I think at the time, people saw more in me than I did in myself. It was just like, I'm just going to do this. All right, man, we won. All right, go on to the next. What's what's next? What's the next thing? I wasn't looking like in the future and trying to see what's going on. It was like, what's the, what's next? All right, Carmelo. This one, Chloe, it's a brand new one, so I don't want to break the seal, so don't worry about it. You want this one? I got to reach too far, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't need, don't need, don't need worry about it. Yeah. And you know what? It's all over. We've reached the top of the hot sauce mountain. Talked about your legendary <coughs> basketball career. <coughs> Touched on the wine business. <coughs> your new show, you got Woo! it. You got it, I know, I know. Hitting the lap. Be careful, Mello, you're tall. Watch out for the boom up there. <sighs> all right. But to close things <sighs> out, I want to highlight your yes. appreciation and impressive collection of installation art that you recently showed off on the AD Home Tour. Yes. So to close things out, 
Which painting on your walls inspires you the most? Which one is the most divisive when you have guests over? And then what would be the first one you'd grab if your house is on fire and you needed to save one piece of art? Oh. The conversation starter would be the thing you marry Quinn. People walk around, they see that, it's like, oh, explain that to me, please. I have a couple <clears throat> South African artists, Nelson Macomo, they watching us, you know, I think it's four or five kids on there, and they all kind of different expressions and point looking at different ways, and it's like they looking out into the world. I have a Ernie Barnes. For me, it's special because you, you get a chance to talk about an athlete doing something different, you know, going to paint and going to do art and, you know, not being pigeonholed into one kind of genre. Well, you know what, Carmel Anthony, your performance today, a masterpiece. Oh, and man, now- I'm good though, it was only one, it was one that got me. It was one. Well, you know what? You don't have to worry about that. It was beyond insanity. Yeah, right? now that Carmella, was crazy. no That's... shame in that. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. <laughs> this camera, this camera, this camera, <laughs> let the people know what you have going on in your life. Listen, man, we got a new talk show coming out, um, 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, uh, co-hosted by the kid Miro. That's gonna be fire. Uh, all my all my fans, all the, my wine lovers out there, we got a whole bunch of releases of wine coming out. But yeah, the show is popping. Hot Ones is hot. Uh, <laughs> you know, and the bomb, Beyond Insanity. <laughs> Woo! So that's the Hot Ones experience. Y'all are bugging with these wings. <laughs> Whew. Did the research, huh? Y'all good research team over here. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? This is Sean Evans, and tis the season to turn up the heat with our Hot Ones 10-pack. That's right. The Hot Ones 10-pack, a legendary lineup with two brand new sauces bookending it on either side. We have the Hot Ones Classic Buffalo, as well as the Last Dab Experience made with the new Guinness World Records Hottest Chili Pepper X. That's Heatness.com, Heatness.com, Heatness.com to get your hands on the Season 22 10-pack. Tis the season to turn up the heat.